Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's Introduction to Microsoft Operating System. Today we're going to be discussing Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. And then there will be a brief discussion on the system's requirements for each of those operating systems. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, we're going to begin with Windows XP. Windows XP was introduced in 2001, and support for it ended in April 2014, so it's at end of life. Windows XP had four different editions. XP Home, which was for the home user, was very basic and only had basic capabilities. XP Professional was for the business user. It added file encryption, remote desktop access, and users could join domains. XP Media Center was targeted to the home entertainment market. Users could watch television, watch DVDs, listen to music, etc. Then there was XP 64-bit Professional. That was XP's only 64-bit edition. It added the capability for more RAM and power, but it also required a 64-bit processor in order to install the operating system, and they were not that common back then. Now let's move on to Windows Vista. Windows Vista was introduced in 2007 and support for it ends in 2017. Windows Vista has five different editions. Vista Home Basic is the stripped down version. Vista Home Premium maps to XP Media Center. Then there was Vista Business. In this edition users can join domains. File encryption was added and Microsoft also added offline file capability. Vista Enterprise was only available to Microsoft Software Assurance customers, MSA customers. The added benefit here was BitLocker Drive Encryption, which is whole drive encryption. The last edition is Vista Ultimate. Every feature that's available in any edition is available in Vista Ultimate. Now let's move on to Windows 7. Windows 7 was introduced in 2009 and support for it ends in 2020. Windows 7 has five different editions. The basic edition is 7 Starter. It only comes in a 32-bit version and the maximum amount of RAM that is supported is 2 gigabytes, but it is very lightweight. It was good for netbooks and tablets. 7 Home Premium was for the home market and it added arrow to the desktop. It also had home groups, which is an easier way of networking than work group, and Windows Media Center. 7 Professional was for the basic business user, and the main benefit here is that users can join domains and are not just left with home groups or work groups. Then there was 7 Enterprise, only available to MSA customers and again, it included BitLocker drive encryption. Last but not least is 7 Ultimate. Just as with Windows Vista, the Ultimate Edition has every feature available to every customer. Now let's discuss the system's requirements for each of those operating systems. The requirements for Windows XP were fairly minimal, at least by today's standard. For the processor, the minimum requirements was a processor that could run at 233 MHz at the minimum. Microsoft did recommend that the processor be a 300 MHz or faster processor. The RAM requirements for XP required that there be at least a 64 megabit minimum. Microsoft did recommend 128 megabytes or more. The hard drive requirements for XP were fairly minimal. You only needed 1.5 gigabytes of space, but back in 2001, that was actually a fair amount of space. The introduction of Windows Vista really ramped up the requirements for an operating system. On the processor side, Microsoft said that the minimum requirement was an 800 megahertz processor, although they did recommend that the processor be able to operate at 1 gigahertz or faster. The RAM requirements also ramped up substantially. The minimum amount of RAM was 512 megabytes, with one gigabyte or more recommended. 
For the first time, Microsoft required a minimum hard drive size, and that was 20 gigabytes, with 15 gigabytes of that being free. Although Microsoft did recommend that the hard drive be at least 40 gigabytes. Microsoft added video requirements to Vista as well. Your video hardware had to have at least 32 megabytes of RAM to run Home Basic, and all other versions required 128 megabytes. As time marched on and so did the operating systems, so did the requirements. When Windows 7 came out, Microsoft required that the processor run at least at 1 gigahertz or faster. On the RAM side of things, if you were running a 32-bit system, Microsoft said that you needed at least 1 gigabyte of RAM and 2 gigabytes of RAM for a 64-bit operating system. Although I would recommend that you at least double those for those operating systems. On the hard drive side, Microsoft required 16 gigabytes of hard drive space for a 32-bit installation and 20 gigabytes of space for a 64-bit installation. Microsoft again upped the ante on video with Windows 7. Now you didn't have a RAM requirement, but you had a capabilities requirement. The video card or video hardware had to be able to support DirectX 9 and WDDM 1.0 or higher. Now this concludes this session on Microsoft operating systems and requirements. We talked about Windows XP, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. And then I gave you a brief rundown on the basic systems requirements for each of those operating systems. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm looking forward to doing more.